Hi, I'm Nedra Tawab. In this week's episode, I'll be talking about my post, I Protect My Energy By. So I'm going to go through eight points that I had in this post. I'll jump in and answer some questions that I saw. There were a ton of questions about this post. Um, so the first thing, I protect my energy by not answering my phone when I don't want to talk. Two, replying to texts at my convenience and not at the earliest convenience for others. I read those two together because people sort of lump those to, together with their question. The biggest concern was how is that not ignoring people? So I think of not always being available as allowing yourself to pause and not necessarily ignoring people because we can go back to it at a time that works better for us. And that's why I said at our convenience and not necessarily at the other person's convenience because we don't want to maybe answer the phone when we're engaging with others because the other person wants to talk or answer the phone when we're watching tv that's usually my thing um but at a time where you feel emotionally prepared to talk and that's not necessarily putting it off forever or if you feel like you need to put it off forever that might be an indicator that there is something deeper going on in that relationship so when I stated that I meant um, making sure that you're in a space to actually talk to people that you're open to the conversation and that you can pay full attention to um, what's being said in the conversation because sometimes we don't really feel like talking and people can tell because we're like yeah yeah okay uh uh-huh nope nothing's going on with me and that's not really a great conversation so make sure that your energy is in the right space to have those conversations and then as in terms of text messages some of us feel really pressured to as soon as someone sends us a text we have to respond back and perhaps there are times when we need to allow ourselves to think about what we'll say or wait for a better time or you know put it off you know do we need to just because we have the ability to do we need to send text all day or could it be you know on my lunch break I'll respond to my text Um, or whatever time works for you if you like to you know respond to text you know every hour on an hour I think that works too but you don't have to pressure yourself to do it right away Um, one of the questions that I got is how do you deal with pushback when you don't answer your phone or you don't quickly respond to text and i would say that pushback is due to you having the boundary of i am not always available i cannot answer my phone or i'm not willing to answer my phone every single time that it rings and that pushback is a part of having healthy boundaries because people want access even at a time that it may not be convenient for you so i think that's our work to do to um sort of accept that some people will push back and that won't be okay for everybody but perhaps you can understand you can explain to people or you know maybe you know make a general statement just like you know there are sometimes i don't want to answer my phone not every single time like hey i'll i'll text you back in a little bit but i think if if you're comfortable with just saying nothing, I think that's the best way to go sometimes and not explain yourself. But if you feel like you must explain why you're not answering the phone or why you're not quickly responding to a text, um, just make it kind of a general thing where you say something like, you know, I was, you know, when I'm busy doing something, I want to make sure I can give my conversations full attention. So there are times where I may not answer the phone. And I think for most people, that would be reasonable. And again, if you're getting significant pushback on that, I would think about who you're trying to set that boundary with. And if they're um, a healthy person, if they understand healthy boundaries. But the most important thing there is you do not always have to be available. I remember, this was probably about 10 years ago, I had a friend and she would intentionally leave her cell phone at home because she was like, you know, if I'm not at home, I really don't wanna talk to people while I'm at Target. I don't wanna talk to people um, while I'm driving. I wanna listen to, you know, the radio or I wanna listen to, um, you know, maybe a podcast or different things. And so she's like, 
I intentionally leave my phone so I can focus on the things that I want to focus on. And I thought that was just a really beautiful way to honor your own time. Number three, speaking to myself kindly while dealing with uncomfortable feelings. So I think sometimes when we feel guilty or we feel jealous or we feel um, angry, we like to label those feelings as bad and they're not bad, they're just feelings. And so we have to be very gentle with ourselves and maybe acknowledge that these are just feelings just like happiness, happiness joy, um, they may be uncomfortable feelings, but they are feelings and you are entitled to have them. So speaking yourself through having those really uncomfortable feelings. Number four, waking up early to ground myself before getting the day started. So one question I got was, what do I do to ground myself? So when I wake up in the morning, um, I've started waking up at 5 a.m. And so what I do is I journal for a little bit. I've been using the Becoming journal. So I write in that for a little bit and then um, I meditate for a little bit and then I get started with my day. I have two kids and so it's really important for me to like focus on myself a bit before I get into the work of being a therapist, being a mom, being all of these things. I wanna be with myself and so I wake up really early to do that. If you are not a morning person, um, perhaps you can focus on yourself at nighttime is that if that is the time where you do your best work for me, I am a morning person. I've always been a morning person. Um, it's a bit of a stretch to wake up at 5 a.m., but it's really not that difficult for me to do it. So I know I'm operating in my, you know, in my zone. So if you are a night owl, you can figure out a different time to do that. It does not have to be the morning. I know there's a lot of stuff about, you know, the, the 5 a.m. day and all of these sort of things. And if you can do that, fine. If not, you can pick a different time of day. That is just um, a time where I am highly focused in the mornings. Number five, not fighting to be right. So the question I got here a lot was, how do you let go of the urge to be right? And this is, you know, this is a whole Instagram post. How do you let go of the urge to be right? <sighs> Realize it's not that important. I think sometimes when we're arguing with people, instead of trying to listen to understand, our whole motive is fighting to be right. And if someone is convinced of something different, it's not my work to change your mind. It's not my work to persuade them. I understand that people think differently than me. And so the way that I resist that urge is by saying, I understand that people think differently than me. And this is an example of it. This person is thinking differently than me. I don't have to um, make them think like me. And that's okay. Everybody, you know, I know that we want to be, um, we want to make sure that people understand us and we want to make sure that people get things correct. But if it drains our energy to get into these arguments with people and interactions with folks, I would say relinquish the control issues that you have around um, being right all the time. It may make you feel a little bit better to just allow somebody to be wrong sometimes. Six, choosing my battles. Everything is not of equal importance. And that kind of goes along with number five. There are some things that I've heard people argue about and it's just like, I don't really care at the end of the day. It doesn't really impact me, you know, like celebrity news and these sorts of things. I don't really know um, like Kanye West, so I'm not gonna like really go hard for, it's like, you know, it's conversation and it can be an energy drain to really get into these conversations about thing that, things that are maybe not so important. So I would just pay attention to the things that you think are really important. Like maybe your thing is climate change. Maybe your thing is, you know, politics. Maybe your thing is um, people being treated fairly. Those may be, you know, the, the areas that you should focus your energy on and not every single thing. Number seven, leaving events, conversations, and interactions when my energy is being drained, peacefully stepping away. We know um, 
sometimes the people, the interactions that we can experience that cause us to have like an energy shift. And when we know that, I think it would be a great thing we could do for ourselves if we could just allow ourselves to step away, maybe leave early, maybe um, sometimes maybe saying no. We know the things that drain our energy and it's okay, not always, um, but it's okay sometimes to say, you know, maybe, hey, I'll, I'll leave a little early, um, particularly for people with social anxiety. I think that um, there is a fear that people will be upset if you leave early. But I often wonder, are the folks that you're concerned about, do they know about you being really anxious in social settings and how big of a deal it was for you to just get out of the house and be there, whether that's for, you know, four hours or for 30 minutes that, um, you've done a really big thing and um, that should be celebrated and not necessarily the amount of time that you stayed. Number eight, taking time to myself to relax, reflect and restore. And that goes back to that morning team routine, just taking some um, time to focus in on myself. Um, I am not like, um, I'm right now I'm using the book becoming journal, but I will admit I am not the sort of person who every single day I wake up and I journal that type of thing. Um, I would love to be that person and that's why I'm doing it. I'm constantly practicing it. I, I have found that I like a mixture um, in terms of journaling. And so um, the journal I'm using now, that is really good for that. But I think it's so important, whether it's journaling, meditation, yoga, um, a retreat, um, a self-care day where you just kind of like sit with yourself, maybe go to a spa and relax and read and reflect like any of those things to really lean into yourself more is a really good way to preserve your energy. And, um, let's see, did I miss any questions here? Oh, here's one. How is protecting yourself different from avoidance? So, you know, it goes back to one and two when people were saying like, I'm really uncomfortable doing one and two because it seems like I'm avoiding people, I'm ignoring them. And I think the, maybe the duration is what the difference is. So if we are always not answering a particular person's call, I would say that that is avoidance. Or if we're never answering our phone, I would say that's avoidance. But if you do that and you follow up and you maybe call that person later, I wouldn't necessarily label that as avoidance. So I would say that avoidance is more of um, a pattern with a particular person or people and the frequency at which you do it. I think occasionally doing something would not um, classify itself as you are avoiding people or you're avoiding particular um, a particular person or interaction. So for this week's Q&A, the question is, how can I let go of an ex that I still care about? And I receive, um, I received a lot of variations of this question, like how do I move on when I still love someone or how do I let go of feelings for a person? And I'm always cued into let go because I think we can exist with very difficult feelings and uncomfortable ones. So how can I let go of an ex? I think we can remember people while, um, continuing to live our lives and maybe a you know, portion of the day you'll be sad for a bit or you'll miss them. I think that's a part of that letting go process and you'll know you're better when that becomes less and less frequent. And I think there's this big thing around like we have to get over stuff. We have to let things go. We can never think about things again. And that's how we know we're doing better. When in actuality, I think we know we're doing better when the things that used to have a strong hold over us are not um, as big as they used to be. So I would say instead of focusing on letting go, um, focus on living in the meantime, living while still um, feeling something for someone else and allowing yourself to feel those feelings, miss someone, um, and continue to do what other things you have going on in life. And I think that's a beautiful way to um, transition your feelings to something else or, you know, eventually someone else. 
um, those feelings will subside. Lots of times when I get questions about how to get over someone, we have to be um, generous in how much time we allow. Lots of times it might be like one week, you know, two weeks and we want to be over it. But, you know, things have a, di uh, a hold on us to varying degrees. So we have to allow ourselves time and space to really process difficult, uncomfortable feelings and relationships that we no longer have. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I will have another video next week. Thank you so much for the comments last week. It's so helpful to see that some of you all are on um, YouTube. I do not use YouTube, so this is a new space for me. So thank you so much for being here with me.